waste their time. Just. A letter from Edmund. Hmm? He's met a girl and married her in London. We've tied the knot now, without any fuss, just in case. Her name is Martine. She's French. I'll bring her down to meet you all before I sail. I'm asleep when they come. Tell them. Tell them from us. It's only love that matters. Love, not money. However much you may have, eventually. Have I said goodbye to the others? My precious children. Emma. Alfred. Harold. Edith. if you please. First class. Jane! <laughs> Fetch out the damson gin. <laughs> I'm catching the 450 from Paddington.
to murder. There's nothing in the headlines. Have a look in the stop press. I must have found the poor woman's body by now. When I changed trains, that attendant said he was going to report it immediately. And you told him you'd be staying here? Yes, I gave him your telephone number to pass on to the police. He did believe you? Why the devil shouldn't he? Oh, I'm not so sure. The awful thing is I'm beginning to doubt it myself. Last week I put sugar on my kippers. I don't think I'm going Doolally. Anyone less Doolally than you, Elspeth, I have yet to meet. Should I still go tomorrow? Roddy will be so disappointed. It's his first Christmas without Margaret. And only your second without Arthur. If I can be of some comfort to the poor sweet ma'am. Then you must do your duty. Is it very hot in Salon? I'm sticky. I've taken plenty of light frocks. I'm rather worried about perspiring, Jane, but she'll just have to change frequently. You're a lady, Elspeth. You won't perspire. You'll glow. Now, if we get our skates on, we should just catch the 10.33. Where to? I've had enough of trains. I can only apologise that no one thought to relay the astonishing news to you sooner. Astonishing? Yeah. Surprised we didn't get the headlines. Amazing discovery. No corpse on train. Told you they wouldn't believe me. No, 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 be fair, Mrs. McGilly Caddy. The attendant did call the local police, and they called us. I interrupted Major Pickpocket surveillance to help identify the offending train, which was then held at the next stop with considerable disruption to the timetable. A full search was carried out. There was no body. What about the passengers? Did you look in their luggage? Why? You read about bodies in suitcases, don't you? I know what must have happened. The murderer must have pushed the body out of the train. <laughs> have you any idea how hard it is to open a train door at speed, let alone shove a body out? In any case, on the off chance that Charles Atlas is the murderer, all the drivers and the guards on that line have been asked to keep an eye open for a body by the track. So far, the phones have remained silent. <laughs> now, I have work to do. Which train was it, may I ask, and where was it searched? Police information is confidential, dear. If I was 20 years younger, I would put you across my knee and tan your hide, you snotty little pup. And it's railway information, not police information, when you think of it. And we all own the railways now, don't we? Got the time. There's still no sign. Oh, okay. Did they have a match? They did. That's us. The very same train. Oh. Do you suppose the murderer's on it again? Oh, I doubt he makes a habit of strangling women on trains. No. It was the last carriage. Third class. Soon after the murder, did you reach Hampton Parver and change for St Mary Mead? The attendant said it was seven minutes to the next station, mm -hmm. and that was uh, two minutes at the most after I told him what I'd seen. If we assume then that the murder happened nine minutes before and you arrived at the station at 5.35, that Charles inspector said this train was searched at Brackhampton, which would have been at 5.40. Here's where we are now. Uh, the tracks run side by side. Must be almost there. <sighs> Would you mind strangling me, Elspeth? Not at all, Jane. Please don't mind us. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> it's a bit, a bit rocky. Mm. Mm. We're slowing down. Mm. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. That's why the blind flew up when he did. Where exactly are we? Right slap bang in the middle of nowhere, have a look at it. This is where you must have seen the other train. Oh yes, so it is, Jane. Someone's still got best catch up! Wait, wait, Eastley! Alexander! James!
What did I tell you? You are never, never to come this far without my permission. Sorry, Daddy. Sorry, Mr. Weasley. It was my fault. J'excuse, Papa. No, je m'excuse. What would your mother say if I had to call and tell her you'd fallen in? Come on. It's time to eat. We slow down around this curve. The railway follows the boundary of a very large estate just before Brackhampton. The house is Rutherford Hall. Rutherford Hall? That clangs a damn great bell. I, I just can't... Oh, maybe I am going to long way. No, 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 no. It'll come to you. I only had a glimpse, but we were looking down. The line runs along an embankment. Well, if that's where he pushed the body out, would have rolled down into the grounds. No wonder no one's seen it by the track. He was a lucky brute. If it was luck. It's the only place a train would be going slowly enough to manage it. It's just possible. He chose the spot very carefully indeed. But why has no one at Rutherford Hall found her? Could be unoccupied. So many of our big houses are being sold off. No, it is occupied, Jay. I've just remembered. Look, Rutherford Hall, cook housekeeper for Christmas holidays. Thank you again for my present. And for yours. I'd hate to run out of talcum powder in that climate. Oh dear. It's the first time Mr. Inch has been to the airport. Oh. Well, it's the first time I've been to Salon. Oh. Hope the pilot knows the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now promise me you won't do anything foolhardy. Promise. Not on my own. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Coward. I'll finish laying the table. Not so fast. A few words of heartfelt appreciation on your last day. Miss Islesborough breezed in like a whirling dervish a fortnight ago to rescue me, standing in not only for my secretary but also for my housekeeper. Clearly, I overpay them both. <laughs> in August, she was in Turkey looking after a sultan. Did you know that a sultan's wife is called a sultana? <laughs> Every time I bite into a slice of fruitcake, I wonder if... I'm so sorry. Miss Campbell? Lucy? Sorry. Whoever she is, dear, speak to her about timing. <laughs> this one's for you, Dickie. Is that Lord Mountbatten? Yes. Oh. said you wouldn't mind my coming on an but I had no idea. Don't, don't mention it. Oh. It's lovely to meet you again. Oh. How is Raymond? You know my nephew, footloose and fancy free. <laughs> like you, Lucy. <laughs> and long may it be so. Oh. I do what I do, I see who I see, I meet who I meet, and it's glorious. <laughs> it's lovely to meet you again, but... Of course. Now... I couldn't pay nearly your normal rate, but Raymond said he'd help, and everything I know about you convinces me you'll take it on. You want to engage me? Yes. Would you like an adventure? <laughs> possibly. <laughs> it's quite a challenge. Very possibly. I want you to find a body. Lucy 
Lindsay Islesboro. I'm Emma Crackenthorpe. What a smart car. Thank you. Wow! It's lovely, isn't it, boys? Boys, don't touch. Come in. We only occupy this wing now, my father and myself. Though, as I said, there's family for Christmas, which is why I advertised. That was my brother-in-law, Brian, with the boys. Alexander's his. James is a school chum. You have a sister. I envy you. Just brothers me. Edie died. Having Alexander. I'm so sorry. Would you wait here? I'll see if my father's ready for you. The Gobstopper King. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. David Quimper, Miss Arsborough. Emma said you were starting. <laughs> Is someone ill? Uh, well, not more than usual. No, I'm giving him the once over, Luther, Mr. Crackenthorpe. But I really came here to uh, talk to Emma. That's Luther's father, Sir Marcus. Crackenthorpe Confectionery. Rotting the nation's teeth since 1881. You surely had. A nougatine twirly in your time? <laughs> I don't think so. Or a choco melty bar? Oh, yes. <laughs> Wasn't I sick? Miss Arsbarrow? <sighs> Excuse me. Thank you. Dr. Quimper. Doctor? I'm delving for your name. It has a definite Anglo-Saxon something about it. It's not in the Chronicles. Wondered if I'd seen it in Ivanhoe. Isn't there an Ainsboro, though, in Harrowwood the Wake? Perhaps you're thinking of that. Harrowwood the Wake? Charles Kingsley? Yes, I know. I'll dust off my copy and have a look. Has Emma explained everything? We too manage with a local girl who comes in most weekdays, so you won't quite be on your own. She's twice a week now. Why is that? Money again? Never mind. There's Alfred. I'll go down. Alfred's my eldest son. Sponging a buckshe Christmas again. But who else will be here? Just Brian and the boys and Alfred. It's a pity you won't get to meet Cedric. He has to fly off again tomorrow. He's the uh, only free spirit among them. He paints in Spain. Well, Ibiza. If I were younger. Oh, and Alfred's with Jacqueline, his girl. Observe, if you will, Miss Aldbarrow, the sheer tawdriness of Jacqueline Briggs. There's no one with him. No, he must have ditched her. Where's Jacqueline? Miss Arsborough? Dine with us tonight? I'll be in the kitchen, Mr. Crackenthorpe. For me? <sighs> Just up here. Just mind your head there. Oh. See what I mean? Oh. Oh. Done my best. Perfectly charming, Tom. And so kind. I just had a fancy for a change from village life. And Brackhampton? Oh, there's a Roman wall, isn't there? Yeah, about three feet of it behind the municipal swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And an interesting church. It's not that interesting. There's a Norman window in the east wall, I suppose. I think I've got a guidebook of St Matthew's if you really want to have a, a look at Never mind. Oh, look, there's my lift to work. Yeah. We're quite busy, actually. Are you? Yeah. Will you be staying long? Well, I did wonder, have you made plans for Christmas? No. Do you know what? I'd be delighted, Miss Marple. Absolutely delighted.
Hello? Mr. Eastley? The boys want to know if you make treacle sponge pudding. Hmm. You can tell them I'm famous for it. Can I be useful? I don't know. Can you? Scrape the carrots. What is wrong with Mr. Crackenthorpe? Well, grief, mostly. Despair, his eldest son, his wife, his daughter. Miss Crackenthorpe told me about your wife. Edie. I'm sorry. Sure. What happened to Edmund, was it? U boat in the Atlantic just after Luther lost Agnes. Ten years ago, last week, she died. Last week? December 4th. Tuesday? Yes. We always gather to remember her. Right. Why don't I take this to the trash? No, no, no. Waste not, want not. That's the one for Christmas dinner. Mmm, the prune and chestnut stuffing. Now that I am famous for. Eorthen modor ye unithe, se alwalda ecce triton. It's Anglo-Saxon for what an excellent dinner, more or less. Uh, Brian did the sprouts. I bet he did. Well, what will we do for tart without your precious Jacqueline? Dad, please, don't embarrass Miss Ayers Barrow. <coughs> Jackie and I... I don't even know where she is and I care even less. Happy? I haven't been happy for ten years. Change the record. I'll play it as often as I want. Why the hell couldn't we have had Cedric after Edmund instead of you? Even Harold would have been better by a whisker. What'll happen to this place when I fall off the twig? Don't be so morbid. Morbid? With my space already booked out there in that bloody mausoleum. Quite an exciting life you lead, Emma says. <laughs> it has its moments. I doubt it compares with being a fighter pilot. That seems a long way back. I fly a desk now for an insurance outfit. Dull isn't the word. This must be a bit of a come down for you. It suits me very well. I have an aunt in Brackhampton, sweet old thing. I thought I might see her occasionally, if I have time. I'll fetch the apple tart. Oh, and there's cheese. And may I call my aunt? Of course. The family were here on the 4th, the day of the murder. Hmm. Where would someone with knowledge of the estate conceal a body? And where is Alfred's missing girlfriend, Jacqueline Briggs? That's what you must concentrate on. It, it, it's in the next chapter, Miss Hartnell, but I won't spoil it for you. Just wait until the end. There's a very ingenious twist. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. It's a shame it's so run down. I suppose with the war and sweets still on ration. Oh, well, Crackenthorpe Confectionery doesn't figure. Old Marcus sold it off. Luther inherited all this, but has to run it on the interest from a trust fund he shares with the rest of us. In my case, through Alexander. It's a pretty small change. Poor Emma won't even see a slice of the fund when it pays out on Luther's death. You know, that's real bucks. How unfair. Yeah, she's a woman. Luther's hands are tied by his old man's crazy will. They fell out, family stuff. And can't he sell? No. Rutherford Hall has to pass to Alfred. Since Edmund died, he's the eldest son. What's that? A mausoleum. The last resting place of the Crackenthorpes. Lucy, Lucy, hide and seek, Lucy! Lucy, Lucy, hide and seek, Lucy! That's Miss Islesbarrow to you. But she said we could call her Lucy, didn't you, Miss Islesbarrow? I didn't say you could scream it. Will you play with us? Please? Please? I'll do the sprouts. Hooray! Oh. All right, then bed. A hundred. Yes. yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. No fish and chip shop in St. Mary Mead, so I, uh, I thought it'd be a nice treat. Hmm. You always were a bad fibber. I looked in your larder. I'll shop. What would I see from uh, my train, where the railway curves along an embankment? A large estate and a house? Uh, Rutherford Hall. Now, that is interesting. 
I had a lecture at the History Society. Now the place is cut off from Brackhampton, but that was the railway. In 18, uh, 1838, the company offered the family £900 for a slice of land so the railway could keep going in a straight line. Supposedly, the representative got a biff on the nose and was sent packing. So the track had to skirt the estate at great cost. That acreage these days. I hate to think what that's worth. Uh, do you know the family? The Crackenthorpes? No. The doctor's an acquaintance, though. Nice chap. I think he's quite keen on the daughter. Are you up to something, Miss Marple? Am I? You don't mind my asking, Mr. Crackenthorpe. Thank you. But did you never think of joining the family business? I had a vision. I saw my life unfolding before me, drowning in a sea of sticky toffee and pretending enthusiasm for a new line in coconut fudge. No, thank you, Dad, I told him. I have a soul, even if you don't. It was a spiteful man cut me out of his will. Made sure his wealth skipped a generation. But at least I stood up to him. Was that before you were married? Yes, but money didn't mean anything to Agnes. She was a wonderful mother. I stood up to him and she understood why. Buried myself in my books and got the sort of liberal education he despised. We were happy, believe it or not. <laughs> Mr. Crackenthorpe. She's gone. I'll never see her again. Jacqueline? Tell me about her. Well, she wasn't what you'd call beautiful. But her eyes, one look, you know? Put it in her hands. Any man who ever met her. What happened? She wanted to finish it. I begged her not to, but she wouldn't listen. <laughs> I know I'm not a very good sort. I do know that. Look, it's never too late to face up to something terrible. Oh, my God. I think you know what happened to her, don't you? Tell me. She's <laughs> run off with cops on a bloody merchant. <laughs> Wait, you mean she's not dead? Uh, dead? No. I just hope none of them press charges. None of who? Oh, none of that fat, stupid, married pillars of Brackhampton society who looked into Jackie's eyes in assorted hotel bedrooms and turned to putty. Just long enough for me to burst in and play the wronged husband. Except she really fell for the last one. Martent. Oh, that's dreadful. It's heartbreaking. It was a bloody good little earner. 
Excuse me. I could do with some coffee. Black. Make it yourself, Mr. Crackenthorpe. Miss Islesborough? Yes. Detective Inspector Campbell, Brackhampton CID. He's taken to his bed again. It's you I'm worried about. The police are getting Harold Dallas to come. And Cedric. He was supposed to be going back to Spain today, but they've called the airport. What was Miss Islesborough doing in the mausoleum anyway? You, uh, you suffer from insomnia and went for a midnight walk. Then you thought you'd look in the mausoleum to see what it was like. No. No? That's what I told Miss Crackenthorpe. But I was looking for the body. A friend of mine told me it was somewhere here. Why would he or she think there was a body at Rutherford Hall? She? A friend of hers saw the woman murdered on a train. I know it sounds improbable, but... My friend is never wrong. Let me guess your friend's name. Tom's father was the best village constable St. Mary Mead ever had. Much missed. I have a confession to make. I did it. Hmm? I scrumped those apples from the Price Ridley's orchard. <laughs> I know it was obvious, but you learnt your lesson falling into the nettle patch. <laughs> the screams. I had him right down to his birthday suit and smothered every little bit of him in calamine lotion. Now, we have our victim, but we don't know who she is. I wonder if these will help. They're very commonplace. If not to say common. But thanks to Lucy, we know she wasn't Jacqueline Briggs. 
Well, the family didn't recognise the photographs of the body, or so they say. We're holding back where she was murdered for the moment. I'll keep my ears open. Um, Miss Asbarrow, you found a body and I'm very grateful. But I can't let you go back. You could be in danger. A victim without a murderer is like... Well, I don't know what it's like. I hate to leave a job half done. And I promise to work at Rutherford Hall, so I can't let them down, can I? Do hurry up, Harold. And you, be careful with that. It's your. It's a year's golf club membership and a dozen good cigars is what it is. Lend a hand, will you? What? Put my jacket on a puddle for her ladyship to walk over? I have no wish to soil my shoes on your jacket, Alfred. How long will we have to stay, Inspector? We're expected for a Christmas house party in Suffolk. Well, that would depend on the progress of my investigation. My sergeant will be showing you some photographs later of the body. See if any of you recognise the woman. What does it say, Harold? They think she died Tuesday of last week. Well, I don't see how they can tell, not from the look of her. It doesn't say when they think she was placed in the mausoleum. No idea who she is. They're appealing for information. Cedric, you've arrived. You know me. Can't resist a whodunit. Hello. Haven't seen you before. Scrambled eggs? Well, there. I was just about to board the plane when I was taken aside. It's very dramatic. He showed me those terrible photographs. Did you recognise her? Sadly, yes. She was an ex-lover who never got over me. Pester, pester, pester. So I done her in. <laughs> How very amusing. Well, I'm glad to see that you haven't lost your sense of humour, Alice, my sweet. And I'd thank you not to adopt that tone with my wife. Don't be so pompous, Harold. Uh, here we are again, as happy as can be. All good friends and jolly good company. Oh, there you are. Dad! It's all terrible. There's a flat foot in the library. Can you tell me where you were between 5 and 6 o'clock on Tuesday, the 4th of December? I was here. How did you get here? I drove. Arrived uh, oh. early afternoon. But the place seemed deserted. Had a drink or three. Oh. And waited. I drove up early to take Emma into Brackhampton Christmas shopping. She never gets out of the house boys would do on the Friday, you know I'd have my hands full then. I can't remember which shops exactly. Greenfords, I expect, and Lyle and Swift. Brian was with me the whole time. We didn't get back to gone six. My father was in one of his moods. He doesn't much like my going out in the afternoons. He shut himself in his room and wouldn't speak to me. Was Alfred around when you arrived? Yes. Yes, he was. I believe he'd been here for some time. I picked Lady Alice up from old friends of hers and then we came on here. Alfred was drunk. Ah, oh, here at last. How was the Henderson? At the time of the murder, I was in my studio, touching up two senoritas and a donkey. Which is the title, of course, of a painting that I have to finish for an exhibition in January. I lost track of the time, I missed the evening flight, and I didn't arrive until the next day. If it is from her, how do we know? She didn't turn up anyway, did she? Quite. Of course not, it's a put Is that Martine's letter? They were just sitting, chatting, having coffee. Rather a pleasant change. I heard a huge row. No idea what about. There never has to be a reason. Cats in a bag. Either Cedric or Luther is lying about the argument the family were having. However, Alfred's the only one without a real alibi. Do you want me to watch him? I want you to be careful of him. You've got some, um... That's better. Mm, you too. Yeah. You 
you some gumption? Miss Arlesborough. Your sister's digging out some red ribbon for the festive touch. I've just been checking your references. Have you? Yes, I spoke to Lord Leesley and Miss Van Moysen. Everything seems to be in order. <laughs> Did you think I forged them? I don't know what I thought, actually. I know I saw you and the inspector emerging from the coal house earlier. Oh, yes. He was asking me some more questions. <laughs> no, you were far too furtive. I must say, he's a man of taste. Was he indulging it? Ow! Lucy? Everything okay? Eastley? Keep away from him. Please. I can look after myself, Brian. You bring out my protective side, that's all. Why is that? Because you're special. And beautiful. Oh. Well, that's something to think about, isn't it? Put it back. David says we should tell the police. You and your bloody doctor, no! He would upset father too much. Have the uh, fox fur and the compact yielded anything? What about the clothes? Mm, it's on the cheap side. Nothing mm. special. There were a couple of items with Spanish labels. Spanish? And the compact is French. We spoke to the manufacturer in Paris. They don't export. So, she must have bought it in France. Hmm. Perhaps she was French. Mm. Or Spanish. Mm. Or just travelled widely. Mm. Mm. Can't Brian control those children? It's giving me a headache. Bad enough being cooped up together without having... Leave them alone. They're looking for clues. When that inspector interviewed me, he said he thought the dead woman might not be British. Did he tell you that? No. What, French? He didn't say. All I said was not British, but Emma immediately assumes French. Oh, she looks scared. Yes, aunt. <laughs> of course. But I am really rather busy. Goodbye. Goodbye. What were the victim's feet like? Her feet? Why? Maybe nothing, but it could be something. Well, I'll let you see the post-mortem report. There's Quimper now. Told you he always pops in for a cup of tea after surgery. David! Join us. Hello, Tom. This is uh, Miss Marple, Jane Marple, Dr. David Quimper. Nice to meet you, Miss Marple. Dr. Quimper? I'm an old friend from childhood days. His, not mine, of course. <laughs> Are you visiting Brackhampton? Mm, I'm staying at the most charming little guest house. Uh, seeing something of the town, catching up with Tom and all his doings, and with my niece at Rutherford Hall. I can see her, too. Your niece? Lucy Islesbury. She found a body, you know. I do. Yes. How's the investigation? Mm. It's nowhere until we've made an identification. How's Emma? Taking it in her stride, as usual. And? You and her? <sighs> Pretend I'm not here. <laughs> oh, but I do love the scent of romance in the air. <laughs> You're in luck, then, Miss Marple. Emma and I are engaged. I asked her the other day. Well done. It's not official. We're not telling the family yet, so... Um... Home's a word. <laughs> Have you known the Crackenthorpes long? 
Uh, I just started my practice down here. I saw Ella's mother out of the world. It's only love that matters. Love, not money. Agnes never lived to see Edmund's wife. Oh, how tragic. He brought her home just after she died. She was so very beautiful, Martine. And shortly afterward, Edmund himself was killed in action. Martine? She was French. What happened to her? The family don't know. Excuse me. A rather demanding patient, I'm afraid. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the family does know. Or at least one of them does. Well, why would he lie? I think you should ask Emma Crackenthorpe that. <laughs> if our body is Edmund's widow, Martine, why would anyone want to kill her? Hmm. Shall we fight over the last cream horn? Was it David who told you I'd heard from Martine? No. In fact, he lied for you. He said I should have shown it to you all along. How did you find out? It was my intuition. It arrived out of the blue a fortnight ago. After Edmund was killed, Martine cut herself off from us. Until this. She built a new life, she says. But now she wants money to give her son, their son, some of life's advantages. We had no idea there was a child. No address. She just announced she was coming down here to meet everyone. I telephoned the others as soon as it came. She says she'll come down on Tuesday. December the 4th, yes. The day you think this woman was murdered. She has a son. The child is family. If it is from her, how do we know? She didn't turn up anyway, did she? Quite. Of course not. It's a put-up job. We only met Martine once, ten years ago. There's awful photos. If by any chance it was her, how could any of us tell? Why didn't you mention this? My brothers didn't want to fuss. They knew Martine was coming, but she never arrived. Not alive, at least, if it was her. She wanted money. The trust fund income would be even more miserable if another share had to come out of it. Mm. I'll clean the stove tomorrow. Oh, no, honestly. A bachelor kitchen can only go so far before it becomes quite unpleasant. I remember the Brownlow's eldest boy, Cecil. Of course, he never married. That's another matter. <laughs> you will one day, and I pity your wife, Tom Campbell. Mm, well, one day, perhaps. <gasps> what? The eldest son. The real prize is Rutherford Hall. That would be worth killing for. If it was discovered that Edmund had a son, it would go to him. The eldest son of the eldest son. He's an unpleasant specimen, Alfred. That would certainly give him a strong motive, if the body is Martine. Hmm. I suppose it would. Such a pity I can't meet the family. I've got the uh, pathologist report for you. Lovely. Oh, do you know? I take it to bed with my cocoa. Night night. Night night. through chapter one and they were off. You too. Yes. Good night. Good night.
Good night, Lucy. this? Look, Dad. It's a receipt for a dress or something from Mrs. M. Crackenthorpe. Possible. Who's Mrs. M. Crackenthorpe? Where did you find this? Stuck in the holly bush. Can I have a look, old boy? The police should see this. All right, skedaddle, boys. Find me some more clues. Now. I can't. Well, let's get it out of the way before Christmas. The way things are going, we're all still going to be here. Em, if it was Martine, then we are all under suspicion. Alfred has no alibi at all. Harold has Alice, but she's where Black was waiting for him. And I'm lying through my teeth, as you well know. Then you're lying too, Em. Brian didn't take you shopping on the day of the murder. Brian arrived by train. I picked him up from Brackhampton Station just before six o'clock. He asked me to. And asked you to lie about it? Lucy says you're all so kind. <laughs> I did, uh, I did promise her, her mother, I'd keep an eye on her. <laughs> oh, is that a Gainsborough? School of ghastly biscuit tin stuff. <laughs> Who's that other G? Mm. Goga. <laughs> ah, now you're talking. Oh, I'm afraid all his yellow makes me rather bilious. This is my brother Cedric. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> of course, you and Gauguin have something in common, don't you? <laughs> His talent flourished on an island. Aunt Jane, what do you do, Mr. Crackenthorpe? Bit of this, bit of that. And precious little of either, most of the time. My family had a marple once. Scullery made. Interestingly enough, Lady Alice is from a very old family. She's, um... What does that mean? <laughs> we all come from old families. And I know an Angus Marple owns horses and a castle. And if you know someone who knows someone who owns horses and a castle, you're laughing. My brother is. Job for life with his father-in-law's company. Whatever it is you do there. Harold has a very responsible position. Doesn't pay just quite enough, though, does it, Harry? You get your bread buttered. But it's spread damn thin. Alfred. Money can be such a thing, can't it? Hello, Tom. You're on duty? <coughs> yes. Meeting someone, you? Just a little twins. I have a very lovely job sometimes. <sighs> David, what do you make of Alfred Crackenthorpe? <sighs> He's a wreck. Why? Is he your suspect? You know I can't answer that. Emma says you ask them all their whereabouts between five and six. Mm -hmm. Well, I know where Alfred was. I saw him in the King's Head. You didn't tell me that. He was with old Terry, the bookies runner. He'd hardly tell a policeman he was doing a spot of illegal betting. Now, would he? Hmm. Thank you, David. So nice to meet you. I'm sorry my father wasn't up to seeing you. Well, I quite understand. 
Oh, I met your Dr. Quimper yesterday. What a charming man. My Dr. Quimper. Mm, your family, sir. Oh, yes. Say, Lucy, aren't you going to introduce me to your aunt? We haven't time, Mr. Eastley. Has he upset you? No. He's very handsome, isn't he? In an American sort of way, I suppose. He's certainly very forward. Thank you, Lucy. What did you find out? Enough for now. What next? Elspeth, describe the woman she saw strangled with her hair scraped back under a band. Bunions, according to the pathologist, and soles like leather, and her toenails were clipped short. So where exactly are we off to? You remember little Elsie Elliot from Church Lane who won a scholarship to ballet school? Mm. She showed me her feet once. Our victim had dancer's feet, and she traveled abroad. And it's Christmas, Tom. You could stay for dinner. I've got a patient to visit. You're still here? I was just going. Not changing, Thedrick. No. Oh. Wish you could change, though. But Harold does, too. <laughs> I've told Dad about Martine. I don't think he'll be down. Mm. I'm sorry. I thought it was best, now that the police know. Well... Good night, everyone. Here, Doc. What do you charge for a consultation? Whatever it is, it's not enough. Good evening, brood. I wonder if another body will turn up. I hope not. I hope it won't be you. I like you. Thank you. Dad likes you, too. I think what he needs is a... A proper home life. He needs looking after. Smells good. Sorry, we won't be able to eat it. We have to return James to his mother. She just got back from abroad and seen the papers. Understandably, she wants him home. Can't I stay? It's current. No, you can't. Keep James company. Get your coat. Good too. Lucy. It's the onions. Just go. <coughs> Be quiet, Marissa. I'll crack your nuts. Encore! Madame? Arrête. Ah! Ten minutes. When I, um... When I telephoned you, Madame Joyer, you said this dancer, Anna Stravinska, left after the performance on December the 3rd, and you've never seen her since. Correct. Our last night at Little Hampton. A modest venue, but a standing ovation. The next night we open in Sassy, but Anna never arrived. To be frank, she was getting on. 
It's a short life as a dancer. If she was a horse... She would be put out to grass? No, no, Inspector. I think you say the neck of the old. Do you have any idea where Miss Stravinska might be now? Girls disappear, especially on tour. It's not uncommon. Perhaps she got herself into trouble, if you understand. A doctor in the back street. But no! No, not with Anna. That's not likely. She's a very good Catholic. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Catholic? From Russia? Russia? Oh, her name. No, 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 no. That's the fashion with ballet dancers. Anna is French. Do you know her real name? No. She had an English husband, she told me. Had. Is he still alive? All I know is she is no longer with him. Where did they marry? London, I believe. And, uh, did they have a son, madame? Impossible. One cannot have a child and dance. How was the curry? Excellent. Thank you. There's nothing like plain, simple cooking, is there? I'll cancel our reservation at the Savoy, then, shall I? Harry. Stop bickering. I thought the curry was delicious. It was certainly hot, Miss Aylesborough. After you with the water. May I have some, too? I'll fetch some more. Dad, please don't be upset. Why not? I just found out that I've got a grandson I've never seen and his poor mother's body ends up on my ground. Shouldn't I be upset? Oh, I'm seriously thinking of joining her. Perhaps grief would unite you. Or joy! For God's sake, shut up! You're so bloody boring, Father. Sit down! Dad! You're just as bad. I used to think I could trust you. Oh. Of course you can. Can I? Oh. Who hid the letter from me then? Oh. Oh. Dad! Oh. Oh. Mr. Hasbara, the curry! Run! Doctor! Whimper! the light on. You will close the door behind you? Yes, yes, of course. How are they? Well, they're all sound asleep. Probably best for them. I'll be in, first thing, just to make sure. Good night. Yes, good night, Miss Hilesborough. How sure are you? Well, I kept back some of the sample for your lab boys. They're the experts. I dropped it off at the police station. Thank you, David. You're next in line now. Until Harold gets it. And then it'll be all mine. <laughs> Stay here. What happened? 
Alfred's dead. Lucy! What's the matter? You're not serious. You were in the kitchen when I was cooking. You made sure Alexander went with you when you took James back to his mother. Why would I want to kill Alfred? Or anyone, for that matter. Why would you lie about where you were the day Martine was murdered? You didn't drive here and take Emma shopping. You came by train and then met her after the shops were shut. How do you know that? I keep my ears open, Brian. Or did you include spying on your resume when you applied for this post? In any case, I couldn't have killed Martine. Why not? I can't say. It would mean breaking a confidence. How convenient. Hey, you know what? Have it your own way, then. What about the others? Is any of them seriously ill? No, they didn't need hospital. Unpleasant, though. Quimper thinks it was probably arsenic. He <gasps> took some of the curry to test. Miss Marple, I have to get to... Uh. Uh -huh. Why would the uh, whole family be poisoned? They're to kill off the weakest member, Alfred. Quimper said he was a physical wreck. One of the family was prepared to poison himself in order to get his hands on his inheritance. Or the murderer meant to poison Luther but killed Alfred instead. Possibly. Lucy's sure she never left the kitchen. No, only four people, apart from Alexander, came in. Mr. Eastley was first. Mmm. Looks good, too. Then Cedric appeared. Shall I put some of this in? Food card. A blue curry, so avant-garde. No! She's not sure how long Harold was there, but... But it was long enough. Any one of them could have poisoned the food. Even Alfred himself came in and propositioned her. Do you fancy a smart weekend away sometime? I'm getting my hands on a nice little bit of cash soon. No, thank you. If you change your mind. What's your head, Mr. Crackenthorpe? Low flying pigs. Interesting. Mm. Perhaps Alfred was the poisoner, but his plan backfired. Mr. Easley left before dinner and wouldn't let Alexander stay behind. Yes, but he wouldn't benefit. Alexander's inheritance would be tied up until he came of age. Harold's got most to gain. There's the house, as well as his share of the Crackenthorpe Trust Fund. Harold must be our main suspect now, Miss Marple. Tom. What? Calamine Lucian was a long time ago. My name is Jane. I'll try. Sorry. Are we sure Anna Stravinska and Martine were one and the same person? Anna was French. She had an English husband. She disappeared at the right time. And then there's that receipt the boys found. I think it's quite possible it was Anna Stravinska in the mausoleum. <sighs> but it's not the same as being certain, is it? I can't stand it here any longer. Don't leave me here, please. Well, come then. I'm still not feeling well enough. Don't make a drama out of it, Alice. Dr. Quimper says you're fine now. That's what he said about Alfred, wasn't it? Please, Harry. <sighs> Mr. Crackenthorpe. Oh, call me Harry. Are you a good comforter, Lucy? My poor brother. I have to get on. Yes, we all have to get on, don't we? That's why I married Alice, but there are some things that you just can't. With one's wife, I mean. Do you see? You are so unspoiled, my dear. So lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Leave her alone. Get out. There's something you need to know about Harold. When Edmund brought his new bride back. Oh, don't worry. Thank you very much. Harold just couldn't help himself. He was so jealous of his brother's happiness. You're perfect. I know you from 
which comes from life. No. I mean, I wasn't sure at the time. She told me when we met again after Edmund's death. I'm the only one who knows. You still haven't told me why you lied. Which train were you on? Which train? I don't know. Why can't you trust me? I want to. Yeah, well, just try harder then, can't you? He didn't say how long he kept in touch with Martine, just that he met her again after Edmund's death. Thank you, Lucy. Alexander's chum, James. What's his surname? It's a cheat, really. Size of a glove. Easier than cricket by a long chalk. You might tell me what we're waiting for. What have you found out? Information which Mr. Eastley should have volunteered but didn't for some reason. Perhaps he lacks confidence in Brackhampton CID. Oh? Huh? Well, your chief suspect for a murder gets murdered himself under your nose for a start. Under your nose, to be strictly accurate. Don't start blaming me. Have you questioned Harold again? Why? I'd have thought it was obvious. He killed Martine to stop her telling the rest of the family what he tried to do to her all those years ago. And with Alfred out of the way, he stands to inherit Rutherford Hall. There you go. I'd give a round-the-clock guard on Luther if I were you. We don't quite stretch to round-the-clock guards. I'd feel safer. Has that occurred to you? You don't have to stay. <laughs> I'd have thought you needed all the help you can get. We may not be the FBI, but we always get our man. That's the Mounties. Or our woman. Not this one. I didn't mean that. I hope not. Here they are. They should make things a little clearer. Jane! Maman, it's arrivé! Martine! What are you doing here? Why? Good afternoon, Mr. Eastley. We weren't properly introduced, were we? Lady Stoddard West has kindly agreed to clarify a few matters. I never ever thought I would set foot here again. Let's go in, Martine. Off you go and Brian play. and Edith were so kind to me after I lost Edmund. I kept no contact with the rest of the family. The memories were painful. But they stayed in touch, and when Edith died, we became even closer. I moved far away when I married my present husband, Lord Stoddart West. But my son James stays often with Alexander for the holidays. Why didn't you tell me this, Brian? I made him promise not to tell anyone about me. I swore I would never come here again. But when James told me what was yeah, going on... I was going to call you, Martine, but then with a the second murder, I just... Just as well Miss Marple telephoned me. I was not sure, but... Um... When I heard James spoke impeccable French and that you'd met Edmund's widow after his death, <laughs> I was right. Lady Stoddard West is alive and well. Luckily. Alfred shut me in there once, when I was six. I still dream about it, actually. A psychiatrist might say that's what made you a very unpleasant man. I beg your pardon? But I'm a policeman. Martine was here. Martine? Then the body wasn't her. I know what you did to her. It's pretty disgusting. Your brother's wife and him about to go off and die for his country. Yes. They were so happy, so simply happy, like Mum and Dad. I've never been able to like women. I may be disgusting, but I'm, I'm not a murderer. No. Does she know? No. 
Take this man home. Inspector? Well, the victim wasn't Martine, so Harold's in the clear. She must be Anna Stravinska. But even if we know who she was, we don't know who she was, do we? Sorry, do go on. Uh, has Mr. Eastley explained to you where he was on the 4th, or why he got Emma to cover up for him? Was he on the same train as the victim? Brian couldn't kill. Even war heroes have been known to go off the rails. What about Cedric, Inspector? Have you checked on his alibi? That he arrived back from Ibiza the day after the murder? I was intending to check the stamps on his passport. That's a very sound idea. Thank you, Jane. Though I always think it best not to alert a suspect until one has the strongest possible basis for one's questions. Hmm, me too. could have come to me. That's what Emma said. I'd have understood. Would you? No. But I'll try. I have to now. The overseas operator. Oh, how exciting. Yes, it's a number in Salon. You don't think Uncle Alfred died because I said there's always another murder in books, do you? No, Alexander, I don't. Well, I expect you to have got heaps to discuss. Goodbye. My subtle son. He thinks you need a proper home life. Look, um... The day of the murder. Yes. Well, I was in London with the bank manager. One hell of a mess with school fees and... Well, pretty much everything as regards money. I was going crazy about it all. Took my eye off the road, shot a red light and crunched the car. I'm not serious, but I had to get the train here. Emma picked me up. I didn't want Alexander getting wind of it. Oh. So, which train were you on? What did your shrink say about your train complex? I, mean, I don't recall. I got into Brackhampton just before six. I'll get you a train timetable for Christmas. Gift wrapped. Brian, I'm sorry. I... It's okay. You're still special and beautiful. Oh, and, uh, I'm falling in love with you. But that'll keep. Yes, Miss Marple. Some more information? Yes. Let, let, let me guess. Timetables, maps, parallel railway tracks. I'm a... No. You d don't, don't come in. You don't have to come in, no. I hope you won't think this insensitive, but I have tickets for Noel Coward's cabaret opening tonight. There'll be a party and, well, it might take all our minds off things. How did you get them? I worked for Mr. Coward, very briefly. I'm not sure. How many did you get? Six. My aunt, of course, and I asked your father. But he suggested you invite Dr. Quimper instead. Did he? Well, I could see, I suppose.
suppose I might as well confess. Confess? I didn't fly in the day after the murder, it was the day before. So you don't have an alibi? Oh, I do. I rather over my success as an artist. I haven't sold anything for over two years. And I'm not very good in the sun. One can't be pale and interesting in Ibiza. Especially if one's not interesting. Oh, Cedric, dear. At the same time that woman was meeting her grisly end, I was in London, sitting the civil service entrance exam. Sadly, though... Don't say it. You flunked that, too. Oh, no. Much worse. I passed top. I was pushing a pen in Whitehall now, instead of flourishing a brush in the Balearics. Poor Dad's heartbroken. Oh. Congratulations, Miss Crackenthorpe. Mum was supposed to be the word, Miss Marvel. Oh, yes. David and I are engaged. It's good for you. Finally. How refreshingly patient of you, Doctor. People do rush into things so, don't they? Did you make those sandwiches, Lucy? Yes. Ah, fish paste. I hope you went easy on the arsenic. Oh, David. <laughs> well, don't be so silly, everyone. David Quimper, I'm arresting you for the murder of Alfred Krakenthorpe and of Suzanne Belaine, also known as Anna Stravinska, your wife. David? <laughs> it's not true. You were married in London on April the 10th, 1939 at St. Luke's Church, Marleybone. She was training to be a dancer. You had your practice in Camden Town. You separated before you moved to Brackhampton, but she was a good Catholic and she wouldn't agree to a divorce. It wasn't patience that kept you from asking Miss Crackenthorpe to marry you. You had to choose between bigamy and murder. You silly old woman. I'd like to seek a second opinion on that, Doctor. <clears throat> oh, you brute. Oh, yes. That is the man I saw from the 450 from Paddington on December the 4th, strangling a poor, terrified woman to death. No. Come on, David.
I did it for us. Elspeth McGillicuddy. How was your flight? Only for you, Jane. Well then. I am so very sorry. I have to know. I imagine it was money she wanted when she contacted him. Her career was coming to an end, after all. Or perhaps she hoped for a reconciliation. Whatever the reason, he made his plans and invited her down to talk things over. <laughs> then he pushed her out. Later, knowing the family were inside, remembering Agnes, he took the body to the mausoleum. He knew it would be discovered eventually, which is why he sent that letter, supposedly from Martine. Suspicion would fall on the family, not him. Then why try to give Alfred an alibi, telling Inspector Campbell he saw him at the King's Head at the time of the murder? He was really giving himself an alibi. He knew Alfred would be dead by the time Tom checked up. You mean it was Alfred he meant to kill when he poisoned us, not Dad? Oh, yes. He had the greatest respect for both your parents. And he would have waited for you however long your father lived. Why kill Alfred? I believe Alfred was blackmailing him. He'd seen something which only made sense later. He'd seen him plant the receipt he'd written with Martine's name on it. A clue for the boys to find now that the body had been discovered earlier than he had anticipated. Where did you find this? Stuck in the holly bush. He said he was expecting money when he came into the... I'm getting my hands on a nice little bit of cash soon. But Quimper was never in the kitchen. How did he get the arsenic into the curry? He didn't. The police laboratory tested it. He added the arsenic to the sample he took before he gave it to the police. I'm just going. It was the cocktail. He poisoned, with just enough to make everyone unpleasantly ill, so that he could administer the lethal dose to Alfred. He couldn't have. I was there. I heard Alfred shouting for him. You heard Alfred shouting at him. Alfred. It's of no comfort. But it was a crime born of love. It's only love that matters. You booked your flight back? I'll not bother. It's all a bit sticky. Oh, how was Roddy? Thriving. I met his new lady friend. She was a decent sort. Oh, there's a girl who's spoilt for choice. There's a girl who travels alone. I'll take your bags. There's no need. I can manage that, Mr. Eastley. Alexander said you needed looking after. I guess I do. Then I... I hope you find someone, Brian. Truly. Right. Have 
Christmas. Happy Christmas. Jane. <laughs> Tom. Tom.